So firstly, Leighton, thanks for joining us. I'll go straight into it. You seem to be flying with Aberdeen so far this season. How are you finding it? Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, obviously, I, I've come to, to gain the experience um, I feel I needed and um, at this club and in the Scottish League. Um, I'm doing that so far. Um, I'm enjoying my football. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I'm, I just want to keep going and, um, you know, try and try and win a trophy or get third place, something like that. So, yeah. Back in action tomorrow against Celtic. I believe it's Rangers next week. Uh, not coming easy, is it, after this World Cup break? Straight back into the biggest test you're going to face all season? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's one everyone's looking forward to. Um, we know how good uh, Celtic are and, um, and we know how good Rangers are as well. Um, but it's, it's two big games, but it's also two good games to get the... The fitness back and and by the end of them two games we should be um we should be all all fully fit and 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 yeah we'll try and try and get a positive re- uh, result in both games well you're third on the table as you've mentioned uh you're in the league cup semi-finals the season's bubbling away nicely but you can't wait to get back out there after the world cup break yeah yeah um the break's been good um it's, it's, it's been a weird one um not, I don't think any of us have experienced it before, um, but it was nice to get away with a family and then obviously go Atlanta um, on like a tour um, and just to see what it was like out there and, and all that were good. Um, but as soon as the holiday was done, I was just raring to get back to it and I think I speak on behalf of all the boys. You, you mentioned Atlanta though. She scored an absolute rocket in one of those friendlies, I believe, which is pretty much what you've been doing all season. Um, you're certainly playing, I think, further forward, but you've got these goals in your locker this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know I can play in uh, the 6, 8 or a 10 um, position wherever um, the gaffer wants me to play. I know I can play it. Um, where I'm playing now gives me the licence to get a lot more forward and create chances, score goals, um, which is always good. And and yeah, I've scored quite a few good goals and um, I just want more, more goals, more assists. And, yeah. It's what, four goals and two assists in competitive action this year. It's 14 games. It's a really respectable record. Did you set yourself a goal total, like what you want for the season, if you can? Uh, yeah, I, I want to try and get myself to around 20 goal contributions, um, obviously goals and assists. Um, it's quite... It's quite. It's obviously really tough, but I always set myself some high standards. Um, so yeah, um, that's what I can uh, do it. <laughs> and it's one where you are playing in this further forward role. I know you said you're comfortable anywhere in midfield, but at Liverpool you were seen as more, I suppose, a number six. So how are you finding being let off the leash as a number ten? Yeah, no, I um, I enjoy it. I remember um, the under sixteen season at Liverpool when I was fifteen, so I was playing the year above, and I was playing as a ten for the um, first time. And um, I remember our, um, I think I was getting top goal scorer um, along with a striker um, at that time. So I've always had that instinct of, you know, trying to score goals, um, assist goals, and then as I was getting older, I would I drop more back to try and control games um, for Liverpool. Um, and as a single six at Liverpool, you you're always getting the ball. Um, you know, you were getting 80 to 100 passes per game and stuff like this. And then obviously coming up here, playing a bit more advanced, you don't get all that anymore. Um, you're not always on the ball as much. But when you are on the ball, you're in advanced areas where you can, you know, create goals for the two strikers um, and score goals. So, yeah. Well, Aberdeen, they had James Madison online, didn't they, a few years ago? I believe there have been some comparisons up there north of the border. Uh, how are you finding that, like following in those footsteps? Yeah, he's obviously um, he's come out to be a very good player. Um, obviously, recently got in the uh, World Cup squad, um, which he should have done, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I didn't know too much about it when he came up here. To be fair, I've, I've seen his free kick the day before I scored my free kick, which is a bit ironic. But um, but yeah, he's obviously he's a world class player. So. To get a comparison, I'm obviously not at that level yet, but that's what I'm striving to be. So I'll just keep working hard and hopefully I can do as well as him. And how did the the transfer to Aberdeen come about? Obviously, it was a, a bit of a mad one. You signed in the morning, I think you'd have been up there the night before, and you thrown on for your debut and you've scored a, a screamer within what half an hour or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, yeah. So it was um, 
the day be- so it was the thursday um well i knew the interest from around tuesday and stuff like this but i spoke to the gaffer on on thursday um and he spoke really well um about everything really the ambition of the club the um the games you'll play obviously against the likes of rangers celtic hips hearts then it's a good place to showcase your talent um i also wanted to come up here for the physicality side of the game um so it was a win-win really um and then after that um on the friday i was just thinking right so i'll go up and, and I, that's when i knew i was going to sign and I was thinking, right, I'll get my car, I need to get all my stuff and then get all my stuff up there and stuff like that. And it was like, no, we want you on the bench tomorrow. The quickest way is to do that is fly. So I managed to get myself to the airport in time and um, my mum and dad drove my car up um, with all my stuff in. I think I got to Cormac at um, about nine o'clock, something like that. I didn't leave till about 11, 12 at night uh, to sign it all. Um, yeah, and then go bed next thing you know. I'm having pre-match at half ten, never met any of the lads and um yeah we're just thinking i was going to be on the bench you know just to see what the league's like and um and stuff like that and then i ended up coming on um yeah and i was just thinking you know do what i can do well and um give the fans a glimpse of what i can do and then i managed to score that which <laughs> um which put me in a really good place it's one where you haven't looked back since. Well, Liverpool and Aberdeen, they'd have been in contact quite a bit during the summer when you think Calvin Ramsey's gone the other way. Is he a player you spoke to about going there or have you spoken to Andy Robertson about playing in Scotland? I know you did with a few of your former teammates are up there at the moment. Um, no, not really, because it come about really quickly. Um, I seen Calvin when he was, uh, I think he was there for about a week before me, um, but he was injured, so he was in the obviously, physio room a lot and stuff like that so i seen him around the place i said hello and stuff like that but i never really spoke about coming up to aberdeen it was more the players i knew that was already up here from previous teams uh going through the academy i mean i could name about five or six that are all in scotland now and um yeah every one of them was saying it'd be, it'd be good for you and stuff like that so so yeah <laughs> and did jürgen klopp say anything to you before leaving um he, he was just saying um because obviously the blackburn loan didn't go as as well as um i would have liked it to he just said just go out and and do your best again um and in time it'll all come good um because he knows the player i am so um the the feedback from um the manager Klopp and uh his backroom staff and and some first team players um were all good it seems that this loan has basically been exactly what you needed after that time at blackburn it's like that was your boyhood club (laughs) play for and it didn't go to plan must have matured you as a player you feel much stronger going into this one yeah definitely um obviously getting off to a good start was was really helpful and as you said i've not looked back since but um my time at blackburn um it wasn't a nice feeling and um and stuff like this um obviously i loved i loved when i played there and um i always will um and i'll always support them um but i in January, I just needed to come back um, and get games under my belt again and, and tried to get that last six months um, of playing 23s football. Um, just play it really well and try and get a decent law for this year and start fresh. Now, I understand that Blackburn they would have been happy to keep you and it was your decision to go back to Liverpool. That shows a, a real maturity to take that decision for what's best for your, your own mental health, I suppose, as well, and to get your form back going into this season with Aberdeen. Yeah, no, it was. It was, um, it was a really hard decision because I enjoyed... Other than not playing, I enjoyed everything about being at Blackburn. You know, I'll, I live two minutes away. I know f- all my family, friends, everyone um, are all Blackburn fans, and um, and I can say I've put on the show, which is you know it was something that I always wanted to do at some point in my career anyway. Um, and I, at, at, at the start, I was like, yeah, I do want to stay because I'm enjoying. I'm just not playing, but the people around me was like, you need to you need to go back, enjoy football again and, and stuff like that. And um, after like two or three days, I was like, yeah, I need to do what's best for me and not see see it as in a fan point of view. How many, or I suppose, what regrets do you have looking back at it? Because if you think of Harvey Elliott going there the year before, he got game time. You look at Tyler Morton this year, he's getting plenty of game time. It's one where if you'd had those opportunities, it would have gone differently. Obviously, there's a new manager there this year. A few regrets? Um. No, I don't. I don't regret going at all. 
Um, obviously, I didn't know at the time I wasn't going to play. I, I, I was getting told I was going to play and do all this, do that. And um, the team just found um, a winning formula. Um, probably the two best players or three best players were in the middle of the pitch anyway. Um, and they started going five at the back and then they ended up winning nine out of 11 or something like that with nine or 10 clean sheets. And by Christmas, they were second in the table. So I, I couldn't complain about not playing because the team were doing so well. It was just one of them. It was probably not the right time for me to, to have gone. Um, but yeah, I, I don't look back at that anymore. I, I just want to, obviously I'm here now and I, I'm enjoying my football and um, I just want to keep enjoying my football. Now on to your, your Liverpool career, if I may. I believe you joined the club when you were like as you <laughs> worked your way through the academy. That's a, a hell of a long time to be with the club. Yeah, um, I think I was six or seven um, at the pre-academy. Um, so I'm the the contract where you've got to be at one club at, at nine, and Liverpool um, was the best option for me at the time, and um, all my family supported it because um, obviously Blackburn and the of Man United. They all wanted me to go, but um, yeah, Liverpool just it seemed right going there. And um, but every age group I was I was playing, I was one of the main players in every team I played in. Um, so yeah, I don't regret um, not choosing another club. Um, it, it's put me in good stead now. So um, so yeah, and working through the Liverpool Academy enabled you to uh, cross paths with. <coughs> A certain Stephen Gerrard at one point, I think you were you were still an under sixteens player, weren't you, when he was under 18s manager, but he gave you your debut. What was it like when he came into the academy setup and what was it like playing for him? Um it was it was a bit crazy at the start because obviously he's my idol. Um what he's done for Liverpool is is um is unbelievable and in my opinion probably the best midfielder to ever play in the Prem. Um and he coached me a couple of times when he was doing his, um, when he was still playing for the club, when he was doing his coaching badges and stuff like that. And every time I was seeing him, I was like, shell shocked and stuff like that. Um, and then when he when he come in and become the 18s manager, um, I was just doing my best in that 16 season to try and get up and and get in. Um, and he gave me my 18s debut against Everton away. Um, but yeah, he, he was. He were brilliant. He were he were always giving good advice and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I can't fault him. I'd say some of your goals this year have been a bit Gerard esque. <laughs> he had a few one to one sessions with you, didn't, didn't he? Back in the day, like on set pieces and stuff. I'm sure he's someone you model your game on in that sense. Yeah, no, it is. Is um, if I could get you know anything part to what he was, then um, I can say I've done well in life. <laughs> yeah, he what used to. He used to um take me um to do a couple of free kicks after you know um sessions during the week um and we're just focusing on how to hit the ball the run up stuff like this um whatever feels comfortable for you and and ever since i've always been um practicing it and it's all about like repetition and just keep hitting the ball um and you'll always um have a better chance of scoring i'm sure he's uh, grown as a manager since he was with the under 18s but how do you remember him as a manager? What was he like, his training sessions? And what's the best bit of advice he gave you? Um, the training sessions were always were always quite fun, to be fair. He was um, he was doing, doing a, lot of, a lot of technical and a lot of games, mini games. Um, I remember um, Mike Beale, who's obviously the Rangers manager, was his assistant at the time, and he was brilliant as well. Um, I think that year when I did train up there with, with him, he was... Um, you just enjoyed it every day. You come in, you you wanted to train, and um, he just made it that that you know the place a lot better. Um, and what will do with part of the question? Uh, what was the best bit of advice he gave you oh, when yeah. he was your manager? Um, it was probably the set pieces, to be fair, yeah. um, because um, technically and and tactically and stuff like that, I know I've, I'm quite high in that um, department. Um, but the set pieces really, um, it's really put a different element to my game where, because obviously set pieces are vital in, in, in football. I know, I think it's like 40% of goals are scored from a set piece, um, you know, in, in the Prem or something like that. I've seen a stat. So to use that as a weapon is, um, is another reason why you can, 
you can go to clubs. I know there's um, at Blackburn there was I remember there was a player um, who played and but he was only really in the team just for set pieces because he was that dangerous. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, it was a good bit of advice. And that year afterwards, I think it was when Gerard left. Uh, you were with the 18s regularly. Won the FA Youth Cup that year. What are your memories of that cup? <laughs> um, well, at that time, obviously, 18s, you're you're playing for points and stuff. It's the first time you're you're in the league um, and, and stuff like that. So when you're in the the youth cup, you just treat it as like what the first team there was like an FA Cup. And um, I remember going through the rounds. We had quite um quite easy games um up until um the semi-final really and the semi-final we had um Watford at Anfield um and we managed to and at that time Watford were, were a really good side and we managed to beat them two I think it was two one um and obviously got us to, uh, through to the final and then you're thinking oh we've got City at that time City's players um you know they were they were brilliant um like Eric Garcia was centre half for them, who's now at Barcelona and, and stuff like that. So we knew it was going to be a tough game, and that first forty-five minutes were hell, really. If I'm being honest, I reckon I got about three or four touches of the ball, and we were just getting popped around the place, and managed to get in at half time and just say we needed one goal, and you never know what happens. And one of our strikers has hit one from about thirty yards out, and the the keepers fumbled it into his net. Um, which on the night we needed that bit of luck probably. Um, and then from then on, we was just, um, it was a bit like a basketball game for extra time. And it got to Pens and we managed to win it at their place on Pens um, in front of uh, quite a lot of people, which we'd never experienced before. What was it like in the dressing room afterwards? Because obviously you're following in the footsteps of some big Liverpool names when you think of the days of Mike Clone and Jamie Carragher getting that hands on the trophy or even Spearing's <laughs> era at that sort of group on it back to back? Um, as you can imagine, it were bouncing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I, I really remember. I just I remember I come off I come off with um with cramp and then I, when we've lifted the trophy and we were on the like a stage, we were all jumping around everywhere and then I got cramp again and I was thinking, Oh my god. So, but then we all ran to the fans and you know, slid on our knees and the manager at that time, Barry Lutus, we, we, we all poured water over his head and you know, doing the things that um that happen quite regularly in first team football. Um so yeah, no, that was a good night. Saying you got cramp when you're posing for pictures with that trophy, did you like fall under the sea of bodies? Like that's pretty much what happened to Carragher in Istanbul, wasn't it? He was right at the front next to Gerald and he just disappears. But did you manage to stand till? No, no, I managed. To, I managed to get off the stage. Um, yeah, I managed to get off in time before before I ended up falling. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it was the the year after that where you, your debut comes, and it's strange circumstances really when you think that game against Aston Villa when it is a bunch of kids because they've got the, the Club World Cup. What was that like as part of that group? Like, you know the opportunity is going to come. You know it's going to be the toughest game of your careers by far. And it's just in strange circumstances with so much attention on it. Yeah, no, it is. But it was obviously because we were all a lot younger than them and and stuff like that. It was it was probably a good way to get, make my debut in front of that many fans. Obviously, with people I've played with for years and, and stuff like that. I know I only managed to come on for like the last 10. Um, but yeah, that was a, that were a proud moment and, and one I won't forget, even though we did get battered. <laughs> <laughs> what did uh, Critch say to you before you came on and then again in the, the change room afterwards? Um, it would probably just do what you've been doing at, um, you know, like it's a normal game. Um and stuff like that and then i remember after that game i ended up starting and we played shrewsbury yeah that was my second game um and then we had a little bit more experience but still a really young team again mainly a 23s team um and yeah that that was that was a lot of um it was a better game you know a full packed downfield and um we managed to win one nil and um yeah that would that was surreal i think that it was an amazing atmosphere at anfield that night it's your first start for the club i'm sure your family were all there and all of this and then the fact that it comes in i think what a month before the pandemic when everything's behind closed doors it makes you cherish it that little bit more 
yeah no definitely it was um yeah that was a brilliant night i had all my family in the crowd mates um yeah and doing it with a team at that time that were playing 23s um to do it with all them and you know working together it, it weren't about any individual it was just about working as hard as we can to try and get the win for the first team and we managed to do that and james milner had a quite a presence that night i believe like he was supposed to be on holiday but he's still there behind the dugout i think he gave a talk in the, the dressing room as well what was that like um obviously I, he's a guy that's been through it all um won many uh um appearances in the premier league i think is he around the top five now or something like that yeah i think he's fourth now yeah yeah um and he's a great guy he's always um looking to help all the young ones when you're going up and stuff like that so to know all the f uh, first team were away and he, he he was in the dressing room speaking to us all you know relaxing us really um and giving all the the advice he did and then you could hear him behind the bench um doing the exact same things and to have someone like that at the club is, is massive and it's probably why he's still there and he's still getting the game time um at his age is because he's that much of a leader and um and how much he can help the team uh, the season after this you get your appearance in the champions league um i don't want to say it was your proper debut but i'm sure you know what i mean for that as in it's first team players jürgen klopp's your manager what are your memories from that game um a bit of a blur to be honest um i remember getting told uh well the day before i were in the um like the tactical bit so i, I knew I, I might have been starting and then um hours before kickoff he, he said that i was he had my name up on the board and I, I had to like look at it a couple of times just to um you know make sure it was my name and you know the likes of salah um Arigi at the time jota um trent um to be to be playing with all them um that you've been watching week in week out and and training with um and obviously the champions league probably the biggest um competition there is in football other than uh, the likes of nationality teams um yeah it was it was a blur and i remember salah scored in the first minute or two and that settled the nerves massively um and then we made a couple of changes at half time um and then we started to get overrun a little bit and maybe their experience showed a bit more than what we had at the time because there were a couple of younger boys in as well like billy cometti or come on i think reese williams were playing um so yeah it was um it, it was a blur and then we nearly got i think Mane nearly scored at the end as well but it got disallowed <laughs> so, yeah, i wish that would have gone in what was a uh, Klopp saying to you before this game? Like, it's still, it it must have felt like your debut, even though it wasn't. I'm, I'm not sure how to phrase that the right way, but you, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, he was just saying, just be calm, just play your normal football that you've been playing at um, 23s, and we know how much of a good player you are, and um, and we trust you for this game. Um, just go out and enjoy yourself, and and you'll be all right. Um, so yeah, I, I managed to do all right. What are his uh, training like, uh, sessions like and what's it like training with the first team when you see Salas, Van Dykes, uh, all these world-class players? <laughs> um, it's obviously unbelievable because they're up there within the best team in the world and um, to be training with them on a daily basis, um, you know it's only going to make you better as well and learning off the best. Um, and probably the best manager in world football as well. He, he's... Um, yeah, he's a really good guy. He's probably, if you've not met him, is is, is um is how you, how he comes across on like the TV and stuff like that. Really funny and uh, gets involved with all with all the lads. So um so yeah, no, it's um it's every every time I, I train there, it's a very good experience. And when you look in your position at Liverpool, there's so many quality midfielders from Henderson and Milner, Fabinho, Thiago. Yeah. Any of these that stand out more than you? I'm sure Thiago is the one you think, wow, what is this player when you're training with him? Yeah, no, definitely. He's, um, he's you know, he's my type of player, probably one, not, I wouldn't say I'm like, but um, I probably got more of my attributes are, are his attributes. And um, when he first came in, <clears throat> I remember he couldn't, um, I couldn't get near him first session. I was just like, wow. Um, 
and then I seen other players try and get near him and they couldn't get near him either. So I was like, oh, it's not just me then. Um, but yeah, not technically and and his passion and stuff like that is outrageous. And even when you watch him in the Prem games, he, he does stuff that not many players can do. Um, so yeah, he's, he is world class. Who's the, the best player in training out of all those senior lads? Um, I'd probably say Milner and Hendel. They're the two that are... Um, they're the two that are always on you. Um, you know, there's not a t- like a minute in the session where you can be off it. They're always um, they're always on it, and and that's where the leadership probably shows. Where obviously the captain and vice captain of um, of a club, and and that's maybe why they do so well. Um, having them players in there just to um, make sure that everyone's um, performing in training as well as games, as well as they can. What do you say has been that highlight of your Liverpool career so far? Um, I'd say the um, the Champions League debut for me. Just Must because, yeah, just because of the competition. Um, you know how young I was and playing with players that play in the Premier League consistently, and that, I think around that time we're doing well in the Champions League, and you know what I mean. It was just, um, yeah, that was, that was probably one of the best days of my life. Must have felt quite surreal, but then when you hear that Champions League <laughs> for the first time, goosebumps on your arm. Yeah, no, definitely. That I can't remember that one bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just I genuinely can't, can't remember it. I think I think I remember. Um, it's only ever happened to me twice, and it was when you when I come out to you'll never walk alone and the Champions League anthem, and then the next two minutes you can't really hear. Like you just get all fuzzy in your ears and stuff like that, and. Um, yeah, goosebumps up your arm, and and that's what you want, you know. And then just a final one. You're still only, I think, 21. What are your aims for beyond this season? Like Aberdeen's going really well. You've said you want to win a trophy or finish top three. What is it you're looking to do beyond that? Is it a loan to another level? Um, no, it's. it's I don't think about what's going to happen in the future. Really, I just want to um, do my best for Aberdeen now, and um, obviously get that. Um, get that experience and, and play men's football again. Um, yeah, and just doing as well as I can and, and see where that takes me. Perfect. Thanks, Leighton. Good luck for the rest of the Thank season. You. Thank you. Good luck against the Celtic and Rangers as well. Thank you. <laughs>